holy internet, what is happening? S190 stuff is happening. So, tested my Make It Modular angle kit for this car at the Muscleman in Tucson. Went super well, except power steering on this car basically completely failed. I'm not sure if it's the pump or the rack, but either way, it's all getting deleted. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to convert this or retrofit it to an 11 to 14 electric assisted rack using the Cortex Racing Controller and a gently used rack from the junkyard. So yeah, as you may know, I'm a pretty big advocate of electric steering, especially the one in my Fusion worked perfect. So I think this is a good upgrade to all you S197 drifters, the early ones. And it can even apply to the 11 to 14s if you just throw a Cortex Racing controller at it. It'll act like a hydraulic rack to Fusion. It, has, it doesn't have too much assist and it doesn't have too little assist. It just has the same assist all the time. Feels great. There's no fluids to worry about. There's no overheating of fluids to worry about. No leaks to worry about. And it just simply works. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this rack out. Pick up a rack tomorrow, and then I gotta wait until I get the, my, uh, another controller for this car. But I'll show you the steps along the way. Okay, so got the rack out in a reasonable amount of time, maybe 20 minutes. It's two bolts, your tie rods, and your steering shaft. Don't have to worry about the lines until you get all that disconnected because you can, they designed it so that it'll drop enough to get to the, uh, the bolt that holds the two lines on the rack. So one thing I wanna mention is I'm gonna have to delete the pump, which it looks like. I'm gonna have to do some research. Uh, I don't have enough light there, but just need to run a shorter belt. They're, the idler pulleys that are there will work just fine to delete the power steering pump pulley. Just get a shorter belt and skip it basically. So yeah, so far so good. Minus, you know, dealing with hydraulic fluid and that's one of the things I'm so glad to get rid of and not having to deal with that. All right, after a little while, I deleted the entire power steering system. Cooler and lines out. And the pump and lines all came out fairly easily. Just pulled the air box and got right in there. So. Yeah, I know my lighting is super awesome, but now I get to pick up the rack tomorrow and I gotta see what the, how long it's gonna take to get that controller, but, um, and I'll, I'll let you know once I do on what size belt to run when you're deleting the power steering, because I'm sure there's a lot of drag racers that run manual racks in these cars, so coming along. Can we have this? This guy stuffed an entire VQ in the back of this Sentra. Okay, so got the rack yesterday. Um, they were supposed to give me like the big gauge harness. Obviously they didn't. They gave me a little flack for my core. Not only, not even for it being hydraulic, but because it didn't have the tie rod ends. Like, okay dudes, anyway. But my guy, my local guy, Jesse Berger, uh, who has swapped the entire, we're swapping an entire 2012 GT drivetrain and dash and all the good stuff um, isn't using an electronic rack so he actually has that whole harness for me that he's gonna give me super nice so now I'm gonna bolt that in quick right and yesterday I also got a belt so this is an 87 and 9 16 inch belt so I'm gonna put that on probably first and then bolt the rack in so I can at least move the car around if I need to got the Cortex rack controller on order they had to order some more but they should be here next week so then i can wire this whole thing up which would be stupid easy now that i got factory wires coming and the cortex controller is easy as pie so super excited to get this thing hydraulic free so it was a little touch and go with the belt i really thought i got a size too short but uh yeah uh 87 9 16 length was pretty perfect at first I did the water pump, had everything routed, ready to, you know, release the, or get going on the tensioner and left this out and to like, you know, push the tensioner down and then put the belt over this. 
was not having it. So took it off the water pump, routed it through here, took a little trickery, got the tensioner going and was able to just slip the belt over the water pump pulley and it fits pretty good and the tensioner isn't maxed out. It does move a little bit once you release it. So gotta say, uh, Casey uh, from this 197 forms, perfect size. Uh, the part number for that belt is, lucky I kept it right there. So that's your power steering delete for a three valve and you don't have to do anything else but just buy this belt and skip the pump that's not there anymore. All right, got the factory tie rod ends off, or inner tie rods, and centered the rack. It just took a quick measurement on each side to make sure it's centered. And then we're gonna, wheels only like turn a little bit over that way. I'm gonna center the wheel, get my uh, joint back on the rack, either that or put it on the steering shaft, I haven't decided. Both of those bolts are easy to get to in the car either way and then slide this thing in. All right, so got the rack in with a little persuasion. Pro tip, so I put the steering joint on the shaft first, then as I was putting it in, I got this bolt started and then tightened that down. This was kind of swinging out here, but then I guess there is a tiny little difference in the early S197 cars that this interferes with the rack. I had to literally just take a whisper of a wish off of this grind it off so that this whole lineup it was so close even with it giving a little tap tap tappy it just the bolt would not go through and it's not easy to get to in the first place so so that was my experience a little heads up for anyone doing this so yeah i just gotta button up the rest of the steering and should be good to go all right so i got the rack tie rods all bolted up i was attempting to use the 05 to 9 inners because i had them all assembled with the extended tie rods and the heim joints is like you just slap it in be real close to alignment well turns out and i knew this kind of prior to but i didn't know exactly why but the threads in the for this that go into the rack are a lot longer than the 05 to 09 on the 11 to 14s or no, they're shorter. So the, the electric rack tie rods are shorter. Well, I tried to trim them and it just wasn't working. Um, the reason is because this is drilled and tapped a lot shallower on the rack for whatever reason. I really don't know why, but upside is um, this joint is actually a little larger on the electric tie rod ends or on the tie rods that come with the electric racks. So just a little heads up if you're doing this conversion, 05 to I'm guessing 2010 as well inner tie rods will not go into the electric rack. So save yourself some time like I didn't and just use the newer tie rods. I wasted probably a good good amount of time trying to make these work because I was too stubborn. I wanted the alignment closer, but then I realized I'll take them off and make this depth the same and it'll be close. And it is for sure. So just a little heads up. Now I'm gonna get to oh yeah. Probably saw that when I walked by, but I got a harness. From my boy Jesse. Sweet. So, and actually, he depended it already. Um, I don't have my Cortex controller yet, but I'm gonna see if Jesus phone can uh, find a CAN bus signal just to see if this rack will work. I'll be able to get power to it. I'm gonna run it to some fused and try and find a good ground. Man, this up iOS update. This thing will not focus like it did. <laughs> so, anyway gonna route the the big gauge wire look and see if I can find any easy access to a CAN bus I'm sure the engine harness doesn't have any CAN bus that would have been easy there really isn't all that stuff is going directly to the ECU I believe um, but I'm sure there's some action here I can find out I can call my buddy Christian at the uh, power by the way probably tell me straight away if there's something close in there but I mean the computer's right there it's got to be got to be close just to, just to play with it but um, I'm guessing this is like low 12 voltage and this is your CAN bus. I know this is CAN bus because it's twisted. It's just like a... All right, so I got my harness kind of mocked up in here. I'll show you. I wanted to make it as factory as possible. Man, okay. And I just put zip ties and where I'm going to put like connectors where there's like holes in the subframe to make my own harness because once I mock this up, I'll put a loom over it. 
There's a little short loom. That's my ground, right into a factory spot, and then the positive goes into the battery, or the fuse box. Now, I know it isn't fused, because that's direct battery. I'm just kind of doing this for testing purposes. I'm gonna add like a 100 amp fuse to the rack itself, because I don't want it to burn stuff up. So now what I'm in the process of, and I got information from my guy Casey, take the these wires here, which Jesse was kind enough to just deep in, not a hacker. So these are my CAN bus lines, or wires. This is CAN bus positive, CAN bus negative for the white without the tracer, and this is this will get uh, ignition voltage. So what I'm gonna do is jump these wires to the OBD2 port, just to see if it'll work. See if my rack isn't bum or whatever, I should be able to, I'll definitely feel the assist if that's the case. So, just in the time being for until I get my Cortex stuff, because this harness will just um, be deleted once I get the Cortex, because that one just needs uh, a ground and a positive, which I'll show you when I get it. But now I'm gonna just try and test my rack for uh, informational purposes, and I'm just really curious and see how this works. I've never actually messed with CAN bus directly, I just know how it works. So I'm kind of excited to give this a whirl and see if the rack will come alive. So I got this hooked up to the CAN bus and the battery always on in the OBD2. Um, I don't want to broadcast on what wires I had to use. Um, Casey Marino uh, helped me out on this. I want to give a shout out. I just wanted to test it because I don't have my Cortex. But it looks like um, even with just the ignition on, it doesn't give any assist until I turn the engine on. So it must not, I'm not sure, see vehicle speed or whatever. Um, so it's not as cut and clear like how the Cortex controller is going to work. When as soon as it gets power, a few seconds later, you have steering assist. Literally, literally, as soon as I fired it up, I got assist. Like, it's in the air, so it's like super easy to turn, but you can tell the difference big time because there's, um, when there's no assist, you're trying to like basically drive a worm gear backwards and the, and the motor in there, but this is, this is pretty cool. So, well, yeah, this is how to swap a electric rack into a free valve or yeah, such a good biographer, eh? But yeah, so I was able to jump the wires to the OBD2 port and get some assist out of it. I did have it backwards the first time because there is a positive negative CAN bus, but yeah, there's steering and it's like it should be effortless. So yeah, super cool. If you use uh, Casey Marino's kit, it'll, it'll actually piggyback onto the OBD2 connector as a connector and it's all plug and play and really cool so I just gotta add a fuse and be good to go so I'm pretty pumped that this all worked out so now I just gotta line it again and Bob's drunk I got power steering again I wasn't done with you guys yet um, but I figured I'd wrap this video up by showing you how I'm gonna get power cleanly uh, from an ignition source that's switched and fused so uh, the Cortex controller isn't here yet but what I did and I found the wiring diagram for a three valve control pack. Um, but I wanted this to be on the body side of things when I convert it to Coyote. So number 46 um, pin in here. Gotta love the focus. Uh, I forget which one it is, but it's number 46. It's, one, it's this row. It's either on the left or right. It's a violet wire. And so I made it Y, split into that. So now this will have... 12 volts with the ignition on, and then I'll put hook this up to the uh, Cortex controller once the time comes. And got the ground here ready, so I'm just gonna baby, uh, piggyback onto the ground there, and that'll be Bob's your uncle. So yeah, so wanted to do all this, you know, when I did the Coyote, but hydraulic power system, power steering system failed me, so I decided to make the jump now and kind of make it ready, also plug and play for when I do the Coyote swap, because it's sitting here, we're close. I just need, to, I want to get another transmission and put like a 26 blind input shaft in it and some other parts. I got the GT500 battery harness ready to go. Got that the other day, so we're cruising. So anyway, I figured I'd make this little video on how to convert a rack and pinion electric rack and pinion from a newer Mustang to a older S197. Thanks for watching.